Hello and welcome to today's math lesson. Before we start our lesson, make sure you have your equipment ready. If you don't, pause the video, grab your equipment and start the video again. Here we have our six starter question. Have a go with all six of them. Pause the video for 10 minutes, then start the video again. Here you can see all the answers for six questions. Change to get in pen and self-mark it. If you didn't manage to do question F, next lesson in next video gonna be the area of triangle. You need to watch that video. Well done if you managed to do all of them right. In today's lesson, we will learn how to find the area of parallelogram. First, we will see what is the parallelogram and how we can find the area of that. Then we will learn how to find the missing links using the area. And at the end, how we can find the missing links using area or perimeter. Okay, let's start finding the area of parallelogram. But before finding the area, we need to know what is a parallelogram. This shape that you have in here, we call it parallelogram because this length is equal to this length and parallel. This length is parallel to this length and equal. So as you can see, you have two set of parallel lines. So that's why we call this shape parallelogram. Now, as we said in previous videos as well, to finding the area of parallelogram or any shape, you need to use the formula of the area of that shape. So let's see what is the formula for area of parallelogram. If you want to find the area of parallelogram, you need to times base by perpendicular height. So again, base times perpendicular height. Let's see what is perpendicular height and what is base. The meaning of the perpendicular is when you have two lines that making a 90 degree angle, a right angle. So if we look at that shape between X, Y, and Z, you only can make a 90 degree angle or right angle only between Z and Y. So in this case, we call Z perpendicular height and we call Y the base. So again, you have to have a right angle an angle of 90 degree between perpendicular height and the base. So if I want to find the area of that shape, that parallelogram, I use Z as perpendicular height and I use Y as base. And I'm not going to use X because that's the diagonal line. This is not a perpendicular height. So I just ignore X. That's just there to confuse you. Just completely ignore the diagonal line. So always use the perpendicular height and the base. Now, pause the video, 10 seconds, have a go with video question. So now that I just want to make sure that we know which two number or which two letter in this case, we need to times together to find the area of parallelogram. We said perpendicular height and base. And perpendicular height and base need to make the angle of 90 degree right angle. So if you look, I have U as perpendicular height and T as base. And the angle between U and T is right angle. So that's why I use U and T to find the area. And I completely ignore V because I, um, I can't use the diagonal line to find the area of parallelogram. Now let's do some more practice with the numbers. So again, I have a parallelogram, the question asking me to calculate the area of each parallelogram. I do the first one. As I said, if I want to find the area of parallelogram, the formula was to times base by perpendicular height. And we need, and by now we know the perpendicular height and the base make the angle of 90 degree. 
So if I look between these three numbers there, I have 6 as perpendicular height and 12 as base. As you can see, the angle between these two lines, not this diagonal one, the angle between these two lines is 90 degree, is right angle. So if I use the formula, so I need to times 6 by 12. So if I do that, I get 72. And don't forget, always the unit of area is unit squared. So if they are centimeter, the unit of area going to be centimeter squared. Pause the video. Have a go with this video question. Now again in this one, I need to use the perpendicular height and base because I'm you finding the area of parallelogram and the formula for area of parallelogram is base times perpendicular height. In this case, perpendicular height is 6 and base is 6 as well. So I completely ignore 7. So I do 6 times 6, which is 36 and the unit is centimeter squared for area. Well done if you manage to do it right. Here is more question for you to practice. Pause the video and have a go with all question. Just make sure you always using for area parallelogram, you're using base times by perpendicular height. Have a go with all question, then start the video again. Here you can see all the answers. Change to green pen and self-mark the answers. Just make sure you don't forget the unit and unit for area is unit squared. Just make sure you always write the unit as well. Very well done if you manage to do all of them right. Now you can get different question as well. The question giving you the area, they asking for missing lengths. This can be a little bit tricky. Just listen carefully, then you would be able to do the questions. So again, the question giving me the area, which is the surface inside the shape, and asking for missing lengths. If you remember, the area of parallelogram, the shape is parallelogram, the area of the shape was base times perpendicular height. So first of all, we need to just make sure we know which is base, which one is base and which one is perpendicular height. As I said, the angle between perpendicular height and the base is 90 degrees right angle. So let's decide which one is perpendicular height and which one is base. This is perpendicular height and this is base. So it means if I times a number by 5, I get 50. So I just want to find that number. So again, if I times a number by 5, I get 50 because that was the formula of area of parallelogram, wasn't it? Times height by base. So if I times a number by base, which is 5, I get 50. So to find that number, I need to do the division. So 50 divided by 5 is equal to 10. So which means that perpendicular height there, that missing length in here was 10 centimeter. So again, because to find the area of uh, parallelogram, I times perpendicular height by base to get the area. If I want to go backward to find the missing length, instead of multiplication, I do division. So 50 divided by 5, I'm not going to use 13 because I don't use the 13, that uh, diagonal line to find the area. So I do 50 divided by 5 is equal to 10, which is that perpendicular height in here. So here we have 10 centimeter. Now, the second question is calculate the perimeter of the shape. So if you remember, for perimeter, we start from one corner, we go all around the shape and add everything up. For area, we use the formula to find the surface inside the shape 
all the gray within here. But for perimeter, we start from one point, go around the shape and add up everything. So if I want to do that, I don't need to use perpendicular height because the perpendicular height is not around the shape. Around the shape, I have 5 cm in here, 13 cm in here, 5 cm in here, and another 13 cm in here. So remember, for finding the perimeter, start from one point, go around the shape, add up everything. So if I do so, I have 36 as perimeter. Remember, for perimeter, you don't use that perpendicular height. That perpendicular height is only for finding the area because it's part of the formula. But for perimeter, doesn't matter what kind of shape you have. For the perimeter of any shape, you just start from one corner, go around the shape, add up everything is around the shape. Okay, now, pause the video, have a go with the video question. Now again, you have the area, the question asking you to first of all find the missing length which is the perpendicular height. And you know if you divide area by base, you find the perpendicular height. So I do 60 divided by 6 equal to 10, so which means that perpendicular height is 10 cm. Now the second question, second part of the question, asking me to calculate the perimeter of the shape. As I said, for, prim for perimeter of the shape, you start from one corner, go around the shape, add up everything around the shape. So if I do so, I do 6 plus 13 plus 6, another 6 plus another 13, which is equal to 38 centimeter. So the perimeter of that par parallelogram is 38 centimeter. Well done if you manage to do this one right. Let's look at this question. Again, question giving me the area of parallelogram, which is 50 in this case, asking to find the missing lengths. So I know if I times perpendicular high by the base, I get the area. So if I'm finding the missing lengths, I need to go backward to find the missing lengths. So for going backward, backward of multiplication, opposite of multiplication is division. So I need to divide 50 by 5 by the length that I have to find the other one. So 50 divided by 5 is 10, which is base. So the base in here is 10 centimeter. Second part of the question asking me to do uh, to find the perimeter of the shape. As I said, perimeter of the shape is start from one corner, go around the shape, add up everything. If I want to do that, I need to do 10, add 10, add 7, add another 7, which is 34 centimeter, which means the perimeter of this shape is 34 centimeter. Pause the video and have a go with the video question. Again, same things. You have the area, you have one of the lengths you find in the other one. So what you're going to do, divide 60 by 6 to find that base, which is 10 centimeter. Then again, for finding the perimeter, you go you start from one corner go around the shape add up everything and find the air, uh, the perimeter of the parallelogram and the unit is centimeter for perimeter well done if you manage to do it right here you can see more questions for you to practice read the question carefully have a go with all question and start the video again. Here are all the answers. Make sure you mark it properly with the green pen. Make sure you have all the units written down, the right units. 
and then when you finish this is the end of the lesson when you finished take a photo of your work send it to a class teacher by email hope you enjoyed the lesson take care and have a good day